It's February, and art exhibitions to celebrate Black History Month are kicking off in this city. Located in a quiet residential area in Northwest DC, Xena Gallery is one of those exhibitions that open its doors to art lovers. Xena Gallery has been in business since 1978 and has been quite successful in establishing great connections with artists and collectors all over the country. This exhibition, titled Creatively We Unite, aims to bring the work of different artists from different backgrounds together. Marjorie Goldberg, the founder of the gallery and an art enthusiast herself, says she only looks to showcase art that is unique. You know, people say, what are my criteria? Um, I say, you have to knock my socks off. You know, that's my short answer. But when someone can come up with an original thought and execute it in an original way. This show is... Um, Many African-American artists that I've, some I are new for me for this show, but most of them I've represented over the years. And again, it's a very eclectic mix. Um, a lot of the artists use a big variety of materials. Um, and I just, I love the uniqueness. You know, I like the meaning. I like the power. You know, I, I, I like the energy uh, of the art. There are 14 artists that are exhibiting their work this month. Hubert Jackson is one of the artists showcasing his work at the gallery for the fourth year. Once he retired after teaching art for 34 years, he got into art himself and began working on a series of paintings. This particular one here is called Spirits of the Wilderness. It, was, uh, it represents uh, the battle of the wilderness, which was, occurred in, in uh, Spotsylvania County, uh, Virginia in 1864. It was very fierce, and at the end of the battle, the fighting was so intense and the woods caught on fire. And all of the um, people who had been left on the battlefield wounded were burned in the fire. So this particular painting represents like, the spirits of all those people who fell in that particular battle. Not all of the art at Xena Gallery are hung paintings. Some are a little different. Chris Malone makes a special kind of art. He fell in love with art when he was a kid. He says he's always been creative and crafty. These guys are my, um, people call them dolls or soft sculptures. And they're like a, um, this is like a telling of my unknown African past and how I see it, how, um, how do our old gods feel now that we put them to the side. Anne Bowie has walked another path before she got into art. After pursuing a career in history and secondary education, she says that she found her true calling when she started doing art. My work uh, basically is about, it manifests itself in two streams. One of them is directly addressing um, African American history and stories. This piece is, um, it evolved from a series of work on, um, that I was just actually sort of just doodling around with, around uh, the notion of standards and of staffs. And you notice in many, many cultures, in all cultures actually, but in, in many cultures, uh, the standard or the staff is used by a person in authority or a person um, of royalty, um, and it tells the, the, the carvings on it tell you who the person is and what they're about without them ever saying a word. Malian artist Ibun Diaye says although he does not come from a wood carving family, he was somehow born with the skill. This one is called Walu. Walu is a Dogon mask dancer. It's, uh, the mask is antelope and uh, all the outfit is uh, fibers made of tree bark. When I grew, oh, I was growing up, I have uh, seen a lot of mask dance all the time, you know, so that's why I carved this mask. Whether you're into indoor or outdoor art, Zina Gallery has it all, with art that has many stories ready to be told. The exhibition is open until March 4th. For District Wire News, I'm Rasha Saleh.